OK, so our next stage for going through this document is going to be adding page numbers. So if I go back to the home menu and we turn this off, you can see this is what your document looks like without the show hide. We're going to keep it on because it makes the rest of it slightly easier to do. So I turn on the show hide feature. We can see what's going on with the document here and I want to put a page number in. So we can go to insert and page number here. We can click on it and my preference is for the bottom right corner of the page, bottom of page, and I like this plane number three. So I'm just gonna say, okay, and there's my plane number three. Now, when it comes up and the advantage of this is you can see it likes to place it slightly higher and it's all about this carriage return here. And I would just go here and delete it. And that'll just drop my number down into the bottom edge within the header and footer margins 0.8. And they're usually within the parameters of most printers now. They'll print to within 0.8 of the edge of a piece of paper. And that's kind of fine and it wastes a lot less and it gives you more to view when you're looking at it. So we have that now set up. Now it might be that you wanna put some field codes in here. And those field codes might be things like the save date or the name of the document. So I'll show you how to do that. And my preference for this is the first thing, I leave the number in here, but I'm gonna stop it from being right aligned and make it left aligned. Because now I'm gonna go back to the insert feature here, and I'm gonna go to the quick parts menu, and I'm gonna ask for a field to be in here. And the field I'm gonna ask for is the document name or the file name, sorry, here it is. And I just want the file name. I'm not gonna specify any of these things. I'm just gonna say, okay. And you can see I get the file name. I then might put a space, usually two spaces in here. And the next element I'm gonna put in as a quick part, and the only other element is the save date. And that should be down here. I pick the save date. Now I want it to be easy. I don't need it to the second. But this is a nice straightforward one. I can say, OK, now I've got a save date in there. I can maybe drop a couple more returns or just spaces in there just to break everything up a little bit. It's a fairly long title for it. But now I know what file it is. I know when it was last saved and I know what page number there is for this as well. OK, I'm in the header and footer. You can see it comes up in a minute here. I can go back to it. I can close the header and footer. But now every page has the name of the document, it has the save date on, and it has a page number down in the bottom right hand corner. There are things you can do in this in terms of moving it around and having things in different places. For instance, you might think, well, actually, I want to um, be able to see a little bit more clearly the page number. So you might double click on this to get back into the header and footer. You might go to here and hit return there. And then if you went back to the home menu, we can change the alignment here. So it's down in the bottom corner. But that probably means with your header and footer, because of this change you've made, that you don't want to be 0.8 at the bottom. You probably want to be something like 1.4. And that means that your images are actually, it's not this I want to change. If I change that to 0.8 again, sorry and keep that and I go back to the home menu and go back to the layout menu and go back to the margins and pick custom margins. It's the bottom margin I might wanna change from 1.2 to say 1.5. And that should just stop anything coming too close to the bottom. You can kind of see where the gray ends compared to where this is. And it'll stop anything getting pushed over there. So that is your field codes. But this is the thing you've been working toward now by doing this. So let's close the header and footer. It's the table of contents. It's the thing that you've been wanting to put into the document and have it automatically picked up. And it's kind of one of the major benefits. Now, if you go to the insert, oh, references, I think it's in apologies. up in a minute if i go to the references and table of contents you can see there's some automated table of contents i'll try and avoid using them because of how they appear 
and I will just go for a custom table of contents because that gives me a little bit more control and it gives me it looking how I want it to look. I won't choose anything else. I've got three levels and I've only set three levels of heading and you can see them picked up here. There's nothing else you need necessarily do other than hit OK and it will drop my table of contents in now. And you might think, oh, it's in gray and it is in gray, but that's about my settings. Again, I think if I go to file and I go to options and I have a look at the options at display now, it's in advanced, I believe. Settings. Hmm. It's the field codes anyway that I'm looking for because my field codes are just grayed every time that they're there, but it's just a useful way of keeping up with what has been. So I don't think it's in general, is it? Field codes. No, fairly sure it isn't. Display proofing. Choose in advanced. Okay, but you start to see some of your defaults around here. Field shading, always. That's what I was looking for in advanced. If I put it when selected and say OK, you'll see it doesn't gray it out here. And similarly, how you're used to looking at it is like this. And this is how it will print whatever happens. But my preference is that I can manage the document much more effectively just to go to File, Options, go to Advanced, scroll down and say Field Shading is always on. And that way I know when there's fields that have got things on in the background of them that are linked through to stuff, they'll appear grey. They'll never print grey. This won't print. What I see won't print much as this won't print. If I have the show hide feature on, these are editing tools, but they don't print the document that way. So I'll turn that off for now. And we now have the table of contents, which is the important thing, one stage you want to get to. And it starts to show you some of the benefits of what the software will do.